This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now live from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Dave McCann. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, right here. Official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It's great to have you February 3rd. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with the guy who knows what it's like to cover the Olympics, which start today in Beijing, uh, China. They, j- they were just on, and now they're back? Yeah, what the heck? It's uh, amazing what COVID can do uh, for the World Games. I remember sitting underneath the cauldron in 2014 in Sochi when they came out as part of the ceremony, lit this big trail of fire up, and the sky blew up, and we're surrounded by people from all over the world, and it was just a, a magical moment. That's what the Olympics is. It's a giant family home evening activity with the <laughs> whole world, uh, and uh, it's very exciting to, to be there. It's an out-of-body experience to, to see it all, and, um, uh, yeah, and it starts again tonight from a very distant place. Not Sochi, Russia, but Beijing, China. Yeah, pr- pretty cool that you've covered the Olympics. That's awesome. Um, Amy Gant helped call some of the Olympics. So we have a few uh, Olympic alums from broadcasting of sorts, right, yeah. uh, on our staff. I didn't cool. love it. I didn't love it. You didn't love I, it? I wouldn't want to go back. Oh, why not? But it was fun to do just because it was Groundhog Day for us every day, it all is, day. And then we got February. on a plane and flew home. Yeah. And exactly. it is February. Exactly. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but it was it was something else. Shout out to Kate Hansen, who's actually co-hosted the show, a uh, former BYU student who – has competed in the Olympics. She's actually helping broadcast Luge for NBC, which is super cool. So uh, shout out to Kate. And uh, I believe today is the 20th anniversary of Salt Lake, uh, the start of those Olympics, yeah. which I remember the uh, opening ceremonies, seeing it on TV and looking out my window from West Jordan and seeing downtown the same fireworks. <laughs> and I thought, that's pretty cool. That is cool. When you're at the bobsled track or the Luge run and they go past you, it's just like, whoa. <laughs> That's nuts. Yeah, in, insane. Okay, here's your show lineup. It's a massive game day for men's hoops against San Francisco. Is it a must win for the Cougars' hopes of playing in March Madness? We'll discuss. Assistant coach Chris Burgess tells us what kind of urgency the team has after two L's last week. We put a bow on the football signing class with one more player, and ESPN ranks the Cougars' class in the 50s. Can BYU win the Big 12 with recruiting classes with these rankings? And I guess Jimmer isn't headed to China after all. We'll explain. Let's fire up some headlines. BYU men's hoops hosting San Francisco tonight at the Marriott Center. Second meeting of the season between the two. The Cougars beat the Dons and had to fight to do it. 71-69 in the Bay Area a couple of weeks ago. Coverage begins at 9 o'clock Eastern time with Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio. It's a 10 p.m. Eastern time tip-off. So get a nap, you folks, on the East Coast. Seriously. Number 16, women's hoops plays at third place Portland tonight. This is a quad one game for the women because Portland's 36 in the net. BYU is beating teams by an average of 20 right now. Dave, you've seen them in person several times this year. They're fantastic. Cougars are 12 in the net today. This is a huge game tonight. BYU added one more signee yesterday after we went off the air. Defensive back Evan Johnson completes the February class. He was the fourth defensive back signed yesterday. 6'1", 175, the son of former NFL receiver Ron Johnson. He's out of Stevenson High School in Monterey, California. He averaged 95.7 all-purpose yards per game. A good receiver, but he's coming here to defend the pass. He lives near Pebble Beach. It's got to be a nice area. That's right. Jim Fredette is not returning to China after all to play for the Shanghai Sharks. He posted uh, that his wife's having a complicated pregnancy and he's going to stay home to help her and that he'll be back soon. So best of luck to Jimmer and Whitney. Another BYU alum, Brandon Davies, eight points, couple of rebounds, three assists in a Barca win over Bayern Munich. Today, Davies and Barcelona against uh, Panathinaikos. And we wish him the best of luck. He's playing good. Lot Say of that Euro, ten times. A lot of EuroLeague love. I love that. Track and field begins three meets in three different time zones today. Okay, Washington State, Weber State, and at Columbia. So just everybody spread out and conquer. Do they, if they win, is it a trifecta? It is. How that's it is a trifecta. Swim and dive. Compete at the Air Force Invitational today. They'll be there through Saturday. The men remain undefeated this season after their win against Utah last week. And you know what all the BYU sports seem to do? Win. Right now, it's going well. Yeah. At, at, at home, specifically, since August, 61-2, and two, all BYU teams wow. at home. That's crazy. Unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. All rise and shout. It's time for what's trending. You're talking about it, and, and so are we. It's what's trending on BYU. You know what's better than one Ben Bagley? Two. 17-6 <laughs> and six BYU hosts San Francisco tonight. 
BYU is 17 and 6. Yeah. It feels like uh, the sky's falling. This team's still doing well. Cougars are coming off of two losses last week on the road. Santa Clara, one you can tolerate a little bit, right? A quad one. Eh, quad four Pacific, uh, not so much. Tonight's game is a quad two with the San Francisco Dons. So, Dave, with seven regular season games left, is tonight an elimination game for BYU's hopes in the NCAA tournament? It feels like it, but it's not. I mean, uh, it feels like it because of what happened last week. But every team has a bad week. And uh, a lot of good teams have bad losses. And BYU got beat by Pacific. That's a bad loss. Santa Clara, not so much. But I think uh, from the psyche standpoint, it probably the answer would be yes from the psyche standpoint of can this team get the wheels back on and move forward. And they've got a whole bunch of games left. We've got a whole month of basketball before we go to Vegas for the tournament where the must-win games are if you're, if you're on the bubble. This one's just a big one. I'd say, yes, it's a must-win for the psychology of it all. It is not a must-win uh, in the reality of things, but, man, is it an important game. Must-win always makes me think of this, and I can't remember who said it. You know what was must-win? World War II. I think okay. it was Brian Regan. <laughs> was it? I think he does oh, okay. a, cam- a comedy stand-up of what is a must-win. <laughs> yes. Must-win was World War II, okay? Tonight's not a must-win. But in, in the, yes, uh, does BYU need this to make the NCAA tournament? No, because BYU has probably three bigger games or more important games than this one left. Let's talk about it. Saturday against Gonzaga. You win that, you have a couple L's that you can still tolerate. Forgives a lot of sense. Yes. Uh, BYU's had worse teams than this beat Gonzaga, by the way. So th- we'll, we'll talk about this tomorrow in the lead-up to Gonzaga. But tonight is actually, you know, a massive game. San Francisco, a uh, good team. St. Mary's has snuck up to 23 in net. 23. That game on the road uh, coming up soon in February is a huge game, an opportunity, a quad one on the road. And then the semifinal, assuming BYU gets there, we're hoping BYU's the two. And right. This goes right there. That game will be a quad one as well with St. Mary's or San Francisco again. And it's later. It's what have you done for me lately. That will be the last win potentially for BYU, barring uh, beating Gonzaga in the championship game if that happens. But um, tonight is certainly big. But I think there are three bigger games left. And then BYU's got to hold serve. Here's the thing, though. BYU probably needs this win as another big win late because you hope BYU doesn't stumble against two games with LMU and two games with Pepperdine. There's this weird sequence in the last five after this weekend where BYU plays LMU twice, St. Mary's, LMU, and, uh, and Pepperdine, a total of four times. You hope you don't have a Pacific slip-up. We hope that's the only quad three or four loss sitting there on the schedule. But tonight is certainly big because San Francisco has been better than I thought they would be. At the beginning of the year when they were like 13-1, and one, I thought, well, I still got to see you in person. I still got to see you in the league. San Francisco sitting there in a position where they're going to be at least in the NIT, Maybe in the tourney. I don't actually believe four will go. I don't know how you feel, Dave. I think three probably will. I think one knocks one of the others out in Vegas. What makes San Francisco dangerous tonight is they didn't shoot well in their home game. And BYU had to claw their way back and, and do that. And Caleb Lohner played uh, some of his best minutes of the season late in that game. Got a key rebound in the final minute. Had a couple of buckets. Um, and, then, and then he's back where he's all over the place. Um, he's got to have – he's the kind of guy that's got to have a big game tonight. Uh, Foos has got to have a big game against Masalki. Masalki because he's huge. Mm-hmm. And he was good down there. Um, the fact that, that the Dons can light it up from their guard line and they didn't in a two-point win for BYU leads me to believe BYU is going to have to play fantastic defense tonight. Yeah. Because if Bouye and Shabazz come in and they put on a show, then BYU has to counter it with Barcelo, who's going to have five guys guarding him, because that seems to be the thing. And then a couple of other guys who aren't hitting have to start hitting. That's the mystery of, well, if, if after those two losses, can you not play that player, that player, and that player anymore and just go to the bench? No. Because you don't have anybody on the bench. You have to have this guy make shots, this guy make shots, and this guy. And that's how you get into the tournament anyway. They they could lose to Pepperdine, and they could lose to LMU if they play like they did Saturday. They could beat all those teams. They can win tonight, and they can take Gonzaga to the wire as long as they don't shoot 69% again if they play like they did a couple of weeks ago. So uh, someone wrote me and said, well, this team's terrible. I can't believe we lost those two games. I thought, you know, a terrible team doesn't win 17 games against this schedule without their two centers. They they just don't. This is a good team that plays really good at times and plays really bad like last Saturday. Tonight's got to be a really good time when they get on the floor. Mark Pope's 34-3. and 
at the Marriott Center. The Rock will be. This is this is. Where do you want to play San Francisco? Right here, right now, mm -hmm. tonight. Yep. And to your point, uh, we pushed it forward with our question. But to your point, looking backward, BYU can't lose three in a row here because the likelihood is that BYU will lose Saturday right. unless they pull off a big upset. You can't lose four in a row and be like, yeah, everything's great. And well, Moraga is still, you still got to go still there. sitting there. Yeah. And on paper, that's a better team than BYU. Although BYU played really well at home and beat the Gales. That's yeah. going to be a huge and game. And the Gales still have a couple of beatdowns coming. They, they've got <laughs> yes, they 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 to play the Zags twice. Yeah. Yeah, which is crazy. Okay, let's get to our resume update. In the net, BYU stays the same at 33. Ken Palm is 28, which stays the same. Still good numbers. Those are March Madness at large numbers. Uh, bracketology, uh, you know, nine seed currently was an eight. I hate the eight or nine, but I like being in more than I don't like being in. Um, Lenardi, which is different. Basically, Lenardi says, here's the seed line, and then bracketology actually punches it into what, um, you know, would have to come out based on repeats of conference opponents and non-conference games and Sunday play in the case of BYU. So those happen to line up today. Bracket Matrix says 8.6. So right now, sitting pretty, but you can't lose to San Francisco and potentially Gonzaga as well and be like, yeah, we're still good. Like BYU would probably still be in, but barely if yeah. the Cougars don't win a game this week. It's fun to be a fan. And with fan, you have some freedom. Uh, you get to be all the way over here, and then in, uh, <laughs> I can't stand this player, and he hits a three. Now you're all the way back over here going, that's the greatest whatever, you know, guy I've ever met. Um, and it's, it's it's the same thing we see it with football. You know, you be 6-0, and lose a game. It's like, well, we don't have any players. You know, <laughs> three wins later, we're like, hey, I think we could still get to the promised land. And, and basketball is the same way. And that's what that's what sports is. It allows us to jump all over the place in our emotions. The athletes themselves have to be in the middle. Can't get too high, can't get too low. They can't go out there and go, if we don't win tonight, it's over for us. Uh, and they also can't go out there and go, hey, we got them at home, we probably should show up and beat them. So they got to stay in the middle and stay focused. But the fans and the rock and everywhere else, we get to be all over the place. And the viewers of this show, one day we're great, the next day, oh, those guys don't know what they're talking about. And that's the freedom of being a fan. And our fans are all over the place. A win tonight will kind of bring everyone back into the middle, and then, uh, you know, take a shot, I guess, take, number what, two or number, number four two, over yeah. there on yeah. Saturday night. Yeah. But, man, tonight's huge. Yeah. The, the last time BYU beat Gonzaga, they were number two as well. Just wanted to mention that. Now, the matchup And just, we got smoked up there just a couple of weeks right? before. So that's lining up, but much more on that coming up <laughs> tomorrow. See, this is naturally a trap game, even though San Francisco is good, because look how many times I just brought up Gonzaga. I know. But we get a <laughs> – hey – that's what fans get to do. We yes, get to move do. right past the schedules to go. When, right. when are we playing USC? That's all that matters. Yes, you know? I take it four games at a time. Let's go. <laughs> Our question of the day. Is tonight a must win for BYU? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Dallin W. BYU on Twitter. You can weigh in on Instagram and Facebook as well. Technically, no, but this is the most important game of the season as far as resume and morale of the season. Kind of tied both the points right. we made there. This is where we find out what the roster is made of. It really is a, okay, you're coming off two losses, huge game at home. Like, what are you going to do? Like, what, what team shows up tonight? I expect and hope that the two sixth-year guards will lead the way for BYU in this regard, in terms of leadership, because... You don't have, uh, as we've chronicled, the front court players to uh, always match up in the way you want, and you're asking young players to be super consistent, which is a hard ask. Right. But there's 12 years of experience, which is crazy, in the backcourt with, with yeah. Tijon Lucas and Alex Barcel. Be the guys tonight, and I expect them to be. And Foose and Atiki have played San Francisco. So here they go with round two. They are young, but they've got a lot more experience than, say, a month and a half ago. And they've had uh, f uh, two halves against San Francisco. So they don't walk out as scared freshmen tonight. Um, and that's part of the maturation process we're seeing with those two guys. And, and so um, they can't play like scared freshmen tonight. And which role players will show up? Because yeah. it's been a carousel of... Is it Trevin? Is it Gideon? Is it Spencer? Is it Seneca? Who, who, who are the guys? So I'm excited to watch it tonight on uh, CBS Sports Network and listen on BYU Radio. Might require uh, everyone on the bench. Going to have <laughs> yeah, to be yeah, fantastic might, tonight. Yeah. Coming up, our friend Steve Young gives a shout-out to the newest BYU football signee. And BYU men's basketball assistant coach Chris Burgess. Does he think tonight's game is a must-win? What's the urgency with the team? We'll discuss. This is BYU Sports Nation.
Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Men's basketball back in action tonight against San Francisco at the Marriott Center. Radio pregame coverage starts at 9 Eastern time, tip-offs at 10 Eastern on BYU Radio. This is indeed a big one. Yes, it is. We're live in Studio B. Jerem Jordan alongside Dave McCann. Now bringing in our guest of the day, Chris Burgess, assistant coach with BYU Men's Basketball. And we were talking about how big this game is, Chris. What's the conversation like with the team this week? Obviously coming off of two losses and now another big one. Uh, the conversation's still the same. Like we tell our guys all the time, like your next game, which is tonight, San Francisco, is the biggest and most difficult game. Um, so I expect our guys to have a little bit more chippiness uh, a little more energy um, coming off these losses and, and be ready to, you know, bring it tonight. And we're happy to be home. We're happy to be in front of our fans. And so we're looking forward to it. But, you know, w our message is always the same. Like, we have an opportunity to get better. We have an opportunity to compete. But, we are, like, this is going to be the most challenging game of the season. It just is. And a lot of folks call it a must game. Win, a lot of fans. You got your pundits out there. Uh, how do you block out the noise yeah of that feeling of we, we have to win this game. Yeah, I think you control what you control. And so going into this game, it's like, okay, well, what is the scout? What's the game plan? Um, you know, um, you know, shut, shut off social media, shut off yeah. your, your, your texts, you know, shut those things down and, and, and just stay together as your team. Stay together was important and just kind of block things out. And again, focus on, you know, the, the task at hand. And there's a lot to manage with that because – if you win the game, great. Um, you know, and, and if you don't, you got Gonzaga bearing down on you. So n naturally, you could be like, hey, this is a trap game. But because it's San Francisco and they're in the tourney yeah. and they played such a, a tough game with you, it feels like it'd be easier to be like, hey, don't worry about those guys. But yet, it's Gonzaga, and that's always circled yeah. on the calendar. So what's the vibe been like of like, okay, we have, we have two big games, but first, it's San Francisco. Our respect uh, for San Francisco is really high. We know how good they are. We know they've got two of the best guards in the league. We know they have a, you know one of the most dangerous five men in the league, and we know that you know we were able to escape with a gutsy win, uh, you know two to three weeks ago up on the hill. Um, and so our guys, I'm telling you, we're completely focused on San Francisco because we know if we're not, they're really good and they they can come in on the on the road and win if we're not 100% locked in. It's just the truth. Like our guys know how good these guys are. There's no secret in conference play, especially as you get to play each other again, maybe a third time in Vegas. Uh -huh. But it seems like the strategy now for your opponents has put three guys on Alex, <laughs> if not three, two, uh, beat him up, knock him around, yeah. make him earn his 20 points, and then. Uh, Allow some open shots for some guys who are struggling. So when you know that's going to be yeah. the plan, how do you how do you count? You know, I mean, it's, it's great game plans by the teams. They know how good it's a testament how good Alex Barcelo is and right. how dangerous he is from all over the court. Um, you you have to send two or three to the ball like you talked about. You have to hit them. You know, you have to hit them and hit them um, to make him fill you all night. And so what Alex is, you know, the reason he's really really efficient and he's one of the best players in the country is he'll make the right play, right? He's going to trust his teammate. He's going to trust the open man. And, and he's going to, you know, continue to move the ball. And the ball will eventually, when you do that, the ball eventually finds its way back to you. And so we're completely prepared. I mean, we're prepared for that. We, we know how other different ways to find him shots. And our guys know that if they start to, you know, 
move without the ball, cut, finish shots, rebound the ball, then then it takes a little bit more pressure off Alex, and then things open up. You look at his numbers here. Have you seen a better shooter? you played a lot of ball. Uh, no. I mean, we've had some good – like Jake Toulson was a big-time three-point shooter, and he always, I felt like he always made really, really tough ones. But in terms of the defense that has thrown at Alex and the way he gets hit and the way he has to – we're asking him to do defensively to fall – you know, it, he just – it's amazing what guys don't understand. It's amazing what he does and how efficient he is with the beatings he takes right. night in and night out. Like Alex Barcelo is special. Absolutely. We're talking to Chris Burgess, assistant coach for the BYU men's basketball team. Um, with, as we get, we're into February now. I yeah, mean, it, this is crunch it's time, crazy. right? Um, this team's 17 and six. You're in a, you're in a good spot. How do you feel about kind of the resume right now? And, the opportunity you have to yeah. build on it and hopefully avoid uh, messing it right. up, I guess, right? Yeah, I mean, we got, we got a great resume so far, and, and what's cool about it is we have, another, we have some more quad ones on the schedule, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, you talked about Saturday versus the Zags at St. Mary's. Um, it was 23 in that. They're really good. Up there. They're really good. And, so, and then you got San Francisco here, which is a quad, quad two. Yeah. Um, so we've got a few more opportunities to improve that resume. You know, we're, when we put together the schedule, I don't know how many more months, how many months ago, we knew it was going to be brutal. We knew our non-conference was going to be really tough. We knew we were going to be on the road a lot. And we, we knew we were going to give our, our guys an opportunity to put together something special in terms of resume. And our guys have done that. So we need to, we need to take care of business. We just, I mean, at the end of the day, we have to take care of business. And, and if we do that, good things will happen. I think one number that, uh, that should be talked about more that isn't, uh, when you lose Baxter and Harward, the yeah. two centers, uh, and I remember we were talking with Mark, and he said, how are we going to get some rebounds? You know, is, is Caleb going to now be the center? But you throw in a Tiki and you throw in Foos, and as we sit coming into this week, um, BYU's number one in the country in rebounding. 916 of them. I don't think anyone's got more than 900. That's crazy. How, uh, how have you done that? Uh, by committee. Um, Atiki, obviously, coming off the bench, um, grabbing, I think, six rebounds last game. Caleb's always got a knack to go chase it. Gideon, Alex, and Tijon are really good at the guard spot, rebounding down, where our bigs are all doing the dirty work, boxing out. Those guards need to rebound down. Uh, so it's by committee. I think we've had different games, multiple games with different, you know, leading rebounders, yeah. um, and it's just got to be who we, it's just got to be who we are. You know, we've won a lot of games because we've dominated the glass, um, and you and you sh if you can do that on the road, you can win. You can win on the road, um, but we've we've got we've got a lot of players that can really chase rebounds and have a just have a good feeling about where the ball's going to go. Starting with Foose and Caleb and Gideon and a Tiki jumping in there and Alex and Tijon at the guard. Is a key to keep a team sub-70? Because I've looked at a couple numbers here. Four and five when giving up 70-plus, and then 76-plus, it's 0-4. Yeah. Is that a number that matters? Yeah, absolutely. We have, you know, we have different metrics and, and goals and numbers that we'd like to um, shoot for every game, and, and that if we can keep the team under 70. And you, San Francisco is at 69, by the way. <laughs> when you won, 71-69. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's important for us. It's important for us to our defense to bring it, especially at home. Um, and you do that by keeping teams off the free throw line. You do that by guarding the three-point line and keeping teams out of transition. If you can do that, you can hold teams under and then, you know, hope your offense can get plus 70. This is a time of year when, when players get in the funks. They get mm -hmm. the cold spells. They, 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 I don't know why or what. Uh, uh, and you've got a few that uh, haven't been able to hit the side of the barn when we know they're good shooters. Mm -hmm. uh, some of those we'll watch after practice and go, yeah, that's a good shooter. But mm -hmm. in the game, things get sped up. And so when you've got two or three of them at the same time, how do you lead them out of that? Because right. you need them for March. I mean, the biggest thing is our philosophy is like you t we, we take and shoot open shots. Right, I think the shot quality is more important than the misses and makes. Mm. If it's if it's a good shot, you, you have to take them because we we not be a coach can drop all different plays, but we might not be able to manufacture another great shot or a good shot. And so if we work really really hard to get open shots, we make extra plays for our teammates. And so the mentality is, you know, of course we put in, our guys put in the work. I mean, you guys are there after practice or before practice. They are taking the, the shots, the game shots, game speeds that they need to. So we have ultimate confidence and faith in them that they're going to step up own their shot, follow through, and believe in themselves and not worry about anything else, right? But it's all about the shot quality. Now, if guys are hunting and we call getting thirsty for shots and taking bad shots, we don't have guys like that on our team, then that's different, right? Then the shot quality goes down. But we are all about, you know, if you don't shoot that open shot, not only are you hurting your, our team and yourself, but coaching them bring you out for turning down open shots. It's just how we play. 
Uh, I th- this week I read Draymond Green saying when Steve Kerr showed up, he said the ball finds the open shooter. Yeah. And Draymond was like, "What? Why wouldn't we just have Steph and Clay shoot all the yeah. shots, but the ball would find them?" Um, so it's, that's an interesting point. Yeah. Last three games with Atiki Ali Atiki, nine of eleven. 18 points, 12 boards, four blocks. He seems to be coming along quite nicely. Yeah, I mean, I think everyone, you know, in this staff and this team knew, you know, when he first got here, you know, he Tiki was the victim of, you know, in Canada, just COVID, not being able to play for a long time. Like, he couldn't even get on the court. Like, every gym was locked down, right? Like, you know, it wasn't like the Utah where everyone's got a gym in their home, right? Like, he didn't have that. Going to the and, church and if your right. bishop's cool with it. And so his, <laughs> you know, he would send him, you know, he his host family, his, his guardians here was his hustle, his high school coach, and they would send me videos, and they'd literally have, like, you know, the backyard hoop that, like, if you shoot a layup, you're going to turn your ankle on the backstop, right? And so <laughs> he was just doing stuff like that. And, but he, so... You know, we knew he was going to be able to be a little bit, take a little bit more time so because he hasn't played. He's already started at an older age, and he didn't get a chance to play games. And so the more game reps he gets, the, the, the game starts to slow down. He starts to understand, and, and there's more opportunities to watch that film with him. And so he's getting better, and he keeps it super simple. Like, right, he's going to post strong. He's going to go to his little hook. In defense, he's actually got, he's one of our loudest um, early communicating bigs that we have on the team. In, uh, like, his fourth language. Yep, in his fourth yeah, language. Right. Sometimes he's not saying the right thing, but you know what? Like, he's talking, and our guys yeah. hear him, right? And so he's doing that, and he's listening, and, 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 and you know, he, we keep it really simple, and he's following it, right? And at the end of the day, he's really long, and he's athletic, so he's going to do some things that, like, you know, his God-given ability or length athleticism is just going to take over. I had a chance to cover a lot of heavyweight title fights down in Vegas over the years. So if tonight, you know, we got the guards and everyone knows about their guards and, and your guards. But if we were have a, a heavyweight matchup between Foos and Masowski, <laughs> what would be the tale of the tape? What's going to be the difference between those two and who has the better game tonight? Um, I'm going to go with Foos. Foos. First of all, Foos is really good. Um, second of all, Foos is really good at home. He I knew playing, you were going to go with Foos. You, I, I wasn't was a setter. I wasn't a setter. Crowd. He's going to go home. Crowd. But Listen, he's got a big challenge ahead. Mazowski is, you know, he's a vet. Um, he's he's using the extra year of COVID, so he's older. Foos yeah. is a puppy, right? He's just a young puppy out there. Um, but I have the ultimate confidence in, in Foos doing his job. Um, and it's not going to be just Foos, right? Like Foos, Atiki, and Caleb. Um, but I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the my player in the home with the, body with shots. Home he crowd. can go to the body. That's right. He can go to the body. He, That's where he got him last game in San Francisco. I think he, <laughs> he got him a couple times, a couple yeah. dunks on his head. So, uh, but most of, like it's a challenge. He's on the scouting report. He's their second or third leading scorer, and he he knows this league. He knows the system, and he's super skilled. And so it's gonna be a challenge for us. But I'm excited. That'd be a fun match of those two. We we're talking about this. The fact that uh, you win 71-69, they go three of 23 from three. I guess, what's the conversation like with that particular element where it's like they're probably not going to do that again? Yeah, you know, listen, I believe in the luck factor at times, right? Shots go in, shot, yeah. shots don't go in. It's all about the shot quality. Ken uh, has like a stack That's right. luck, right? That's right. And like, every, team's, every team is on both sides of it. And so I thought we did a fantastic job up there of limiting the amount of threes they usually take. They're way under their average. You know, but the ones, majority of the ones they took – Right, there were some uncontested or late contested that like, oh, you dodged the bullet, you dodged the bullet, where we watched that film, we studied that film, how did they get it, you know, what was the breakdown, you know, was it a switch, was it, you know, a down screen, pin down, whatever it was. And so we've watched a ton of that film of how we can be better, um, because that is a point of emphasis is we call it being there on the catch, right, making them dribble to a shot, because, you know, I think Bouye is probably their best guy in terms of coming off the bounce, banging a three, Uh, but the other guys, when their feet are set and they're locked and loaded, they shoot up. They shoot at a high high rate. So we ha- we have to do a better job. But I do like the fact the last game, you know, they didn't take it like you said twenty three. They usually take. They, they like to get up thirty five, forty threes. Mm. And the that important high. thing is they missed the last three. They missed last three. And that, exactly that is right. actually his move. Like everyone kind of talked about Leslie. I'm like, oh, he's gonna go left step back. He's gonna go left step back. Tijon did a great job contesting it. Yeah. But that actually is his. He he he's really he's you know, he's efficient when he gets there. Bouye and Luka Doncic. Yeah, that's right. That's step right. Back. Yeah. Well, good luck tonight. Thank Let's you. Give you some BYU Sports Nation karma. Appreciate and, it. And uh, hope for a win here. Let's awesome. go. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Okay, Thanks. Chris Burgess, assistant coach with BYU Men's Basketball. Coming up, we'll get you ready for the game. Deep Blue gives us a behind-the-scenes look at game day, like today is with Alex Barcelo. It's pretty cool. What does he do on a game day? Yeah. And would you camp out in 10-degree weather for the Gonzaga game? I know Dave's answer, but I'm asking you, the viewer and listener. This is BYU Sports Nation. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. 
It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Tomorrow night, ninth-ranked men's volleyball hosting 10th-ranked Ball State. Ball State's number 10. Watch the match at 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain here on BYU TV and on the app. Home of, home of Boom Goes the Dynamite. That's where it came from, Ball State. My favorite player on the volleyball team is Jared Brady. For, uh, I know why. Because I coached him in Little League and T-ball. Yeah. No, he can fly. I didn't coach him in volleyball. It was, it was baseball. Yeah, yeah. he's a yeah. freshman this year. He's one of the freshman. young guys. Uh, Ball State, as I've mentioned, knocked off number one Hawaii Saturday and Monday. Wow. And are the only team in the country to play five games and still be undefeated. Was it over in Honolulu? No, it was at home in yeah, okay. Muncie. That makes sense. Yep. You get those guys over to Muncie, <laughs> though, that's not the island. Forget about it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, he is Dave. I'm Jeremy. This is BYU Sports Nation. Don't forget, you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok, the BYU Sports Nation account specifically. Let's whip it. Cougar Whip Around is presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. BYU's football recruiting class ranked 53rd by ESPN. Can the Cougars compete in the Big 12 with a recruiting class that's in the 50s? Maybe. I think realistically, BYU's not going to have a top 25 class, like, ever, maybe. Um, I hope they do, but, like, let's, let's be honest, probably not. Um, at 50, I, I want BYU to be in the low 40s because what BYU does better than a lot of schools is develop. Tyler Algier came in as a walk-on. He's going to be like a third or fourth round pick at running back. Like, yeah. He wasn't a four-star or even a three-star. So BYU does need to get better, but realistically being in the 30s almost feels like it's unrealistic. Well, you know, the f couple years ago it was in the 70s, so trending in the right direction, and it's our first Big 12 recruiting class. So keep moving forward and we'll keep getting better. Yeah. Football signee Evan Johnson's brother Wes posted a video of Steve Young giving Evan a shout-out. Here it is. All right, Evan. Congratulations, man. Going to Provo. I got to tell you, I, as, as cool as I thought it was when I played a long time ago, it is so, so, so much better of a place. I know you're going to have a great time, great campus. Kalani's the best. The spirit of the place is awesome. Uh, you're going to thrive. I'm super happy for you. Good luck, and I'll see you out there. That's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure that uh, that's at the Tahoe Pro-Am, by the way. That's yeah. where he is. I um, hope Evan knows how cool that is. <laughs> seriously, to get a Steve not everyone Young gets that. Yeah. None of the other recruits got a Steve Young shout-out. I didn't on my birthday, but Kiki Solano did. Um, <laughs> does he now have the Steve Young karma and is on his way to BYU greatness? <laughs> I don't know. I know he's, he's, he's probably not going to be seventh on the depth chart when he gets here. they got big plans for him. But uh, he can always come in and go, hey, Steve Young. Uh, I got a shout-out from Steve. You know. Yeah. Can I at least be in the 2D? Yeah. yeah. Or, if, or if I'm not where I want to be, hey, Gennaro, why don't you call Steve Young? Yeah. My friend Steve's on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> Use that. Never hurts to have uh, 
have that in your back pocket. So, yeah, I think it's going to be fun to see these new guys coming. Mm -hmm. It'll be great. Is tonight's game at Portland with the BYU women, who are nationally ranked at number 16, is that a trap game? It feels like it a little bit because Gonzaga is Saturday on the road. BYU's won once in Spokane, by the way. It's really hard, maybe twice. I think it's once. But Portland is a good team that two years ago won the West Coast Conference Tournament, and they return a couple of those players. Yeah, Alex so, Fowler's outstanding. She's, she's tremendous. Um, kind of. Portland is a quad one game for BYU, so I think, it, no, I think they're in a good spot. Two quad ones this week. And two wins. They're kind of stuck at 16. They've never been higher than 16, like, ever. Uh, and the national polls have kind of just kept them there. They won three games last week by, like, 31 points each or something crazy. They stayed right there at, at 16. But Jeff Judkins told me the other day, he said, this team acts like a top 20 basketball team. Mm -hmm. And that is an advantage for them going into this environment tonight. There'll probably be more BYU fans there because Portland rocks when it comes uh, to hey, BYU fans. All my homies in the 503 got to yeah, show up to this. They'll be let's, there. Let's go. And then they go into Spokane where the Zags are the underdogs. So uh, act like a top 20 team. Go in and play like one and come out with two big wins and climb a little higher in the polls. They want to go to the go. Final Four. They don't, they're not talking about the semifinals of the WCC. They want to go to the right. Final Four. Yeah. They've got to get to the Sweet 16 to validate being perhaps the greatest team in program history. For sure. Okay, The Rock announced the line for the Gonzaga game will start tonight at midnight. Would you camp out in 10-degree weather for the Zags game? And by the way, expected to be about 11 degrees. Tomorrow the high is 34, low of 10. Saturday's high is 39, low of 16. I wouldn't camp out for free money. <laughs> Let alone, I, I don't even camp out up in the hills, but there's no way I'd be sitting over there in a tent by the Marriott Center. I don't care for what, but I love that students are young and free, and we got a couple on our staff in here that are, that are camping be there. out. It's like, hey, more power to you. We have two students who work on our staff. The, one of them hit the half-court shot at a game this year. You remember that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Colton Potter and Jared Ivins. They will be out there. He got like 8000 bucks. Right? Yeah. And he's still camping out. <laughs> right. He got the free. Well, it wasn't you free. You buy some Cougar Club it. tickets for that game. Yeah, seriously. You get a really. Yeah. I mean, Colton, you ought to consider. Uh, don't leave Jared in the dust, though. Uh, yeah, I, I love The Rock. They're awesome. They do things that you and I would not. And that's why they're amazing. Yeah. And they impact the game, for sure. Free throw defense is real, Dave. You believe in it? Free throw defense? Absolutely. <laughs> Coming up, we double down with our predictions for tonight's matchup against San Francisco. And we spend a game day with Alex Barcelo in the newest Deep Blue. Don't miss it. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. This veterinarian is healing pets and healing hearts, one story at a time. Dr. Kwan is on a mission to give back by helping the pets of the homeless. He travels around the country to aid anyone in need. But these pets aren't just animals. They're best friends, family members, and a source of comfort to their owners. Watch to see inspiring stories of resilience, friendship, and love, all on Street Vet on BYU TV or on the free app. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
Women's gymnastics are number 18 in the country. Every sport on campus is nationally ranked. Back in action, hosting Boise State, Saturday at 2 Eastern time, and right here on BYU TV and the BYU TV app. So Friday and twice Saturday, the Smith Fieldhouse will host events. It'll go Volleyball Friday, Gymnastics Saturday afternoon in the Fieldhouse, and then Volleyball. The crew over there does a great job, man. More power to them. All the dust they got to clean up for that. It's a lot of moving around. Okay, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Jeremy Jordan alongside Dave McCann. What's it like to be the best player on a top 30 team on a game day? Dave and I have no idea what that feels like. But Alex Barcelo does, and he is featured in this week's Deep Blue, presented by Brady Industries, Simply Better. It's game day. Let's get it. Cougar Nation, you, you guys know me as, as a person. You guys know the troubles that I've been through at Arizona, where I came from, and then through the, the journey that we've had together, um, the, just the support that you guys have given me, it, it's, it's meant everything to me. It's not going to be an easy journey. It's, it's still going to be a roller coaster, but, but I know that there's, there's no other place I'd rather be, no other people I'd rather do it with, and I think that it's going to be a really special season this year. Just trying to stay as locked in as I can on this, this game, this scout that we have but just trying to keep my mind clear. Other than that, making sure that my body feels good, mind feels good, just making sure I can help my team with whatever I can to help us win tonight. What up, what up? Jeez. We got film with Coach Fieger, making sure that I'm prepared with Scout. Make sure I'm locked in. I can help my guys on the offensive end of the floor and the defensive end. And we'll go from there. Locked in, man. Now we're going down to get some treatment. Get my body right. How are you, man? Hey, Come on now. Hey, I'm trying to keep up with you, man. Yes, sir. What's up, Rob? much there's nothing to see here <laughs> he's the magician behind all this and make sure that my body my body feels good going into game day <laughs> just take it yeah. oh, bro. appreciate that Yeah, listen up, we're about it. Real quick, I'm just gonna run through his identity this team. Now, I wanna talk about number one, Jace Townsend, the Denver transfer, who is a leading scorer. He, he's gonna play, right? And so he may start, I'll talk to you guys. Okay, he's a shooter, he's a scorer. We're gonna, we're gonna be a stick hand catch two with him. We're not gonna run him off the three point line because he's taking three threes a game, but he's taking like 11 shots. All right, let's go. Let's get it, man, let's get it. Yeah! <laughs> Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we ready? Let's get it, fellas. Let's get it, man. Let's get it. I'll never forget the first time that Alex Barcelo walked into our gym. It was in the annex. He was on his official visit. He went on the court and started shooting. And he was a little bit nervous and a little bit broken and a little bit unsure. And then to watch him go through year one here and have such epic performances on a great team and then walk in last summer with people questioning, could he make the transition to a point guard position? Could he lead a team that was going to be without Yoli Childs and Jake Toulson and TJ Hawes and all the questions that came with that? And to watch him go through the summer a year ago, seeing if he could actually bridge the gap with all these new players and kind of bring them into the fold and, and take the mantle of leadership. And then to walk, watch him walk in the gym this year like he owns the joint with the highest of high level goals now, with all the stuff that people know about him already. They know he's the best shooter in the entire country over the last two years. They know he can run as a point guard, a top 25 team, and now taking on this challenge of can he lead BYU even higher and put him in a position to, to go 
uh, chase his professional aspirations. The opportunity to watch these guys grow step by step by step and become these great young men and incredible leaders is uh, really humbling and wonderful. It's the best part of coaching. Just finished up pregame meal, getting ready to go take care of my body. Now I got a pregame superstition. I always come in with the fruit salad, make sure that I usually eat this right now, a little bit now, and then after, once I get treatment and do my meditation. So let's get it. If I make it big time, I told the guys I'm gonna donate an escalator to go up these stairs and then a slide to come down them into the locker room. People don't understand when we do two a days. Our legs kill going up these stairs, three flights of stairs, and you got two more up there. Everything that I do, I like to keep it structured. Um, you know, I, I live by control what you can control, and uh, especially on game day, I like to wake up and have my set routine, so everything that I do, I structured it in increments. Um, I just finished up with some yoga. I always do 15 minutes of yoga, followed by two to three minutes of meditation, just to slow my mind up preparing for this game. And uh, just, just knowing how my body feels, always being honest with myself and uh, continuing on that routine so my body feels at its peak when I step out on the floor. I'm trying to tell these freshmen, man, the older you get, you need your rest. You gotta stay up on your sleep. Halfway through the season right now, came back for two reasons, to bring championships to Provo and also to make my dream come true playing in the NBA. Uh, I feel, feel really good about how the season's gone so far. You know, we battled some adversity, had some injuries, um, but we, we've been able to bounce back off those and um, continue to win games, so um, I feel really good. I know every time I step out on that floor, I gotta give it my all, um, not only for myself, but for Zoe, my fiance, for this team and, and for these fans. And, that's just the one thing that I have in mind. Every, every, every game that I go into, I just know that I gotta lay it all out there for everybody. Let's go, man. close on multiple occasions to double digit leads here in the second half long to AB good again AB right back at it Marcelo curls to the free throw line jumps it and scores it Marcelo actually I've never stopped, seen that. picked up the ball and looked the official right in the eyes as if come on AB that's not three oh! that's not judicious Five on five, man. Five on six. Five on seven. Five on eight. I don't care how many dudes against us, man. We coming out a bit on top. We coming out on top, man. Let's go, yes sir. Oh, it's been a day, but it's always nice when it ends with a dub, man. Everybody's happy. Now we're moving on to the next one in the morning. Let's get it. I think we should give the fans what they want: a shooting contest. But if you're too scared, I understand. You hear this? <laughs> You think I'm scared? Yeah. I'm not scared at all. Then let's see it. I'll, I'll shoot against you left-handed. <laughs> How about that? You couldn't even beat me right-handed. <laughs> OK, now she's capping. <laughs> now she's capping. I didn't want to look back 10 years from now and regret the decision of, you know what, I could have stayed a year and maybe I would be in a different position. I, I didn't want to leave any, any stone unturned or anything on the table. I, I wanted to give it everything I had. 
One of the main things that I've learned of coming back is, is I don't want to live with regrets. I want to always give it, you know, everything that I have and put everything I have out there. <laughs> Get it. Thanks for following me around on game day. We were able to pull out the W. That's a wrap. Alex Barcelo, Deep Blue. No one has had three Deep Blues. He's the first. He's the first. And for, for the two of us in all our church ball experience, our advice for Alex tonight is just to go out there <laughs> and let it fly. Just chuck it up. Just have a Get good time. 30 footers. When he's having a good time, <laughs> everyone else is usually having a pretty good time. It's going to be fun tonight. And it, and it hit me while we were watching that, that uh, of those, there's three other big games as well uh, with this one. This is the most winnable of those four. It's At home, San Francisco. Got to yeah. get it done. Let's go. Coming up, a rise and shout to a BYU coaching legend. And we get ready for some picks that we'll probably get wrong in the double down predictions. It's been a pretty dry streak recently. Maybe someone will get one. Dave's here to change that. This is BYU Sports Nation. Yes, I am. On the basic level, we offer transportation. We carry four wheels, tailgates, and a place to rest your rump. Beyond that, we provide adventures, opportunities, and jobs well done. So perhaps our favorite offering is our full line of trucks, including the new Nissan Titan. Right off I-15, Tim Daly Nissan Southtown and the popular full-size Nissan Titan. Think Nissan. Think Tim Daly. If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Hey, family. If you're looking for something new to watch, stop scrolling and start streaming. BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together. From bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun, there's something for everyone. Binge entire series, experience all the feels, immerse in nonstop intrigue, and treat yourself to unexpected turns. Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. Be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Oh, The Rock's going to be there tonight. It's going to be fun. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU radio app. Or download the podcast, Google BYU Sports Nation podcast, and don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the show. Okay, tonight's a ball night. So it's BYUSN Double Down Predictions time. Man, we have stunk recently. we got to be way better. Uh, I guess we and the team stunk last week. Maybe we'll all be better tonight for the San Francisco game. Standings, me 29, Spence 16, Dave slash Jason slash Blaine 5. There should be an asterisk next to that. You don't get picks every game, but we throw that up anyway. If you get a prediction right, you get one point. If you get both, total of three points. Dave. What do you have? I got Foose outperforming uh, Masowski. We were talking to Chris Burgess about this heavyweight matchup, and, and I like Foose at home. Uh, he's he's not a freshman anymore, and he's he's a crowd favorite, and he's going to give a lift. So I think he outperforms Masowski in points and rebounds. In each individual. Lift. Points and rebounds. Okay. And Caleb Lohner is going to score 14 or more. Oh, calling your shot. Cougars need him. He's capable. He's got to relax, come out, and uh, like he did in San Francisco, he was a game changer. It's got to be that tonight. 14 or more for Caleb Lohner. My picks. Number one, Alex Barcelo or Caleb Lohner will score the first points for BYU. What do you mean? Or can you have worse? Okay, I'm going to go Caleb Lohner scores 14 or Tijon Lucas. No, <laughs> but I'm very specific. The first point of the game, like the first made shot will right. come from one of those. Okay. Alex Barcelo will shoot 50% or better from three. All right. He shoots 68% against San Francisco in his career. I'm hoping he continues that. 
in Spencer's it, picks. He's at the bottom of the barrel. Not because he's got what Tijon is. Everyone's doing combinations today. Yeah. 20 or more Tijon and Seneca Knight combined for 20 or more. That's, that's possible. Someone from the BYU bench will get a technical foul. That's the bottom of the barrel. Just somebody, yeah, yeah. Somebody. Just somebody. Interesting. Okay. Hopefully someone yells something again like the San Francisco. What do you win? When you could lock this whole thing up by tonight. It feels like it. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's actually true. But uh, in the next couple of games, I probably could. Nice if Shep and Blaine had helped me out a little bit in our lowly yeah. position. Yeah. They just beat Spence. That's the goal. Just beat Spence. Uh, our, question of, our question of the day. Is tonight a must win for BYU at 86 WI Coug? Um, let me ponder this curious inquiry for a moment. Yes! <laughs> or as Marv Albert would say, yes! Don't win this game. You're staring down a four-game losing streak and fifth or sixth place in conference. I completely disagree. No, you'd be top four still. And NIT bubble, not NCAA bubble. No, 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 no. I feel like that's an overreaction. You're absolutely entitled to that opinion. But, uh, no, if if you lose four in a row, you're not on the NIT bubble, okay? <laughs> you're on the NCAA bubble, okay? Yeah, Lenardi will validate that. Fans so the best. If that happens. Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at WD Heath 40. Depends on the context. To get in the tourney, no. To prevent things from snowballing, absolutely. That was your point. Like, like the mental part of that. Yeah. And, yeah, the tourney, no, no, no. They'll still be in, but now they're on the fringe of being out. But for the last five are against LMU and Pepperdine twice. They're tough at home. Mm -hmm. Be tough at home. Okay, today's Rise and Shoutout, presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Our good friend Dave Rose, everyone knows he's been battling cancer. Uh, he's had a heart attack. He's had a stroke. He's continued to fight. He's extended the game. Uh, he's back in uh, a tough spot right now. And so prayers out to Coach Rose and Cheryl and all the family. We wish him the best. He is a fighter to the ultimate. You look up the definition of fighter, you should see his picture in the dictionary. Uh, our hearts go out to the family and to Dave. And uh, we're thinking of you. We're praying for you. And um, and uh, and just know that as we move forward. Amen. Cheryl posted on Instagram. He's back in the hospital. So thoughts and prayers with Dave Rose. Our thanks to today's guest, Chris Burgess. Burgess was good. He was really good. Yeah. What a big game. He's my favorite former Duke and slash youth of all time. He's, yeah. the only, he's the only one. He's the only one. For Dave, I'm Jerem. Shout out to uh, Dave Barber. Sorry, Dennis, no time. Join us tonight on BYU Radio. Cougars and Don starting at 9 Eastern. Go Cougs!